fetches, you know, it's fetching our, <laughs> our signal. <laughs> so I, I really know, um, I know we're live when I see it on our Facebook page. So hello everybody. The, the light came on that we're live. So good morning, good morning. Welcome to Brentwood Inspired Living Center community. We are so glad to have you with us on Facebook Live this morning. My name is Amy Van Ling and I'm the spiritual director at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. And I wanna say happy Father's Day out there to all those fathers, the father energy, all that good stuff. I'm scrolling my phone. I like to tell you that because I look down sometimes and I want you to know why I'm looking down. I'm looking down because I have Zoom in front of me on my screen and then I have our Facebook uh, live feed on my phone. So that's where I check in with you guys and I'm able to see your comments and your questions and all the good stuff and see who's popping on with us, which um, is always my, my fun, exciting part. You guys know that. So good morning, Karen and Ron and Maria and Steven and Kathy. Everybody's jumping on so quickly these days. Seeing that notification and popping on. Hello, Jan. So leave us a comment. Um, let me know that you're here. Let me know that you can hear us and see us because I always appreciate knowing that we're, you know, we're reaching you because we're, we're kind of over here and we assume we are, but we never really for sure know. <laughs> so say something to me, give me a heart or a thumbs up. So I'm gonna give it just a few seconds here. We'll allow a little time for everybody to jump on with us. Um, good morning, Jenny. And Garrett, you're two together. Yay, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Luinda is here. Wonderful. So this morning we have Michael Allen with us, my dear friend. Uh, actually, that just feels so insufficient of a title, dear friend. And my brother, my fellow lover of God and life and humanity. Um, we are so grateful that you are here with us today. Um, just so joy-filled. Your talk is caring is the practice of moral character. What's in the way of caring about self and other? And we're going to talk about true uh, love being unconditional, unconditional love. Um, beautiful, favorite topic of mine. So who else is popping on? Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Laura. I'm here from Jackson, Wyoming, and I can see and hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. David Miller is here, and Dawn is here, and Dave is here. Yay! I am also so thrilled to introduce you today to Asher Stern. He is a dynamic, heartfelt musician. And, um, you know, it's just one of those funny meetings that I just happened to be on Facebook late one night, and he was streaming live from, I don't know where you were, maybe you were doing a gig somewhere. And I just, nine bottles. I, yeah. And nine I, nine I, bottles of beer wall. <laughs> tuned into him and I was just like who is this guy I love his his spirit his energy his heart I could just feel it and so I messaged him I was like hey would you be willing to come play some music for us and uh, he said he was willing to drive and then COVID you know hit us and so we um, didn't have that in-person meeting and but he's here today and I'm so grateful because it's Father's Day and he is an amazing dad of two beautiful kiddos that he has running around there with him and He's doing the, the dad juggle this morning. So thank you so much for, for be, being with us this morning. I really appreciate it. Um, he did a really sweet, that one of the songs he's gonna do today, he did a recording with his children the other day. And I'm gonna post that on our page later because it's so sweet, so precious. So good morning, Bob and John is here and Florence. Yay, everyone's joining us. And bright and beautiful Jennifer is here with us today for our inspirational reading and our prosperity blessing. And she has an announcement about a new fundraiser we're doing that we're really excited about. So um, yay. Okay, divine beings, thank you for joining us. Welcome to all new viewers. Maybe you're, you were invited by somebody and maybe you just stumbled upon us. So no matter how you found us, we are so tremendously grateful that you're here with us today. Um, if you were joining us here at our center, you'd get a nice little welcome packet and a lot of hugs. So um, we still like to do that virtually. So, so leave us a message to connect. We love that. We love to hear from you. So we'll have a, a Q&A right after the service. Um, right when Michael concludes, we'll do a Q&A. So leave your questions and comments. And then we will move into our workshop today. Michael is leading a workshop at 11.30 um, on our after-service Zoom link. 
um, that's where you can find us and it's going to be spectacular so join us there at 11 30. so good morning everybody i am so glad you're tuning in and we're going to get started right now i'm going to open us with our mission statement and um, so I've got my phone here. I'm still, I'll still check messages while we're here. And so let me know if um, I need to know anything from your end. So I'm going to uh, speak our mission statement. And I invite you to take a deep inhale and just feel into the words of our community. We are an open, heart-centered, spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. And yay, Jennifer is here. Thank you, beautiful Jennifer, sweet, sweet friend of mine. She has an inspirational reading to share with us, so I'm going to hand the screen over to you. Thank you, Amy. So as you already know, today we celebrate Father's Day in our country. So in keeping with our theme of caring and today's celebration and in honor of loving and caring fathers everywhere, here are a few heartwarming and funny stories about dads. Naomi writes, when I was little, my dad would sometimes sing the song, Sweet Baby James by James Taylor to me as a lullaby before falling asleep. And once or twice, he even played guitar along with it. I loved it so much that I chose it for our father-daughter dance at my wedding 12 years ago. And now I sing it to my boys as a lullaby. It will always be our song. And Sarah tells us, Although my dad worked crazy hard when we were little, when he was off, he was totally ours, taking us hiking, bike riding, horseback riding, and was a captive audience attending our pretend schools or churches, or letting us put a thousand little barrettes in his then thick hair while he was watching the news. And Danielle exclaims, in sixth grade, the cool experimental public school my parents had jumped through hoops to get their five kids into closed. And we were all shipped to a super strict school down the road. When the first test was about to happen, I really had no idea how to study. I was in tears. My father made me a chart and showed me how to memorize the facts and test myself. Not only did he take the fear out of studying, but he also made it fun. I'll never forget the sense of relief and comfort that gave me. And finally, Emily shares, when I was little, my dad and I both loved to swim. And when we would go on family vacations, we would both immediately head to the pool. He had this trick that I loved where he would hold my feet close to the surface of the water so that I could walk on water. I thought it was the most magical thing and would ask to do it repeatedly for hours on end. He was such a good sport. And so you can see the impact and imprint that caring presence has and that the impression and the caring that these children felt from their father just being there for them. So I wish each and every one of you a very happy Father's Day. Thank you, Jennifer. That was so sweet. I love those father stories. I found a video the other day of different clips of dads, you know, being dads. And I just, I love watching that because dads just have a different energy and it's so fun to, to hear and watch and feel into that. So thank you for sharing that inspiration this morning. Okay, so um, let me unmute you, Asher. Or maybe you need to unmute you yourself. <laughs> it will let me. Okay, awesome. Okay, Asher is on with our first song and we are so grateful. Thank you for being with us. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes I lay under the moon. I thank God I'm breathing. Then I pray, don't take me soon. Cause I'm here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown. But I never let them get me down. So when negativity surrounds. I know someday it'll all turn around because all my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more, there'll be no more wars, and our children will play one day, one day, one day, oh, 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 one day, one day, one day. It's not about win or lose, cause we all lose when they feed on the souls of the innocent, blood drenched people, keep on moving, though the water stay raging, in this maze, you could lose your way, be away, it might drive you crazy, but don't let it fizzle no way, no way, sometimes in my tears I drown, but I never let them get me down. So when negativity surrounds, I know someday it'll all turn around because all my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't wanna fight no more. There'll be no more wars and our children will play. One day, one day, one day. So we'll change, treat people the same, stop with the violence, down with the hate. One day we'll all be free and proud to be under the same sun, singing songs of freedom like warrior, warrior, oh, 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 warrior, oh, 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 I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more wars and our children will play one day, one day, one day, oh, 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 one day, one day, one day. Awesome. So awesome. Cool. That is one of my favorite songs. So when I saw you um, do that with your kids the other day, I was like, we got to get this. We got to get this on. Thank you. Yeah, that's one of the songs I have to make sure I'm muted so no one can hear me singing because I wouldn't be too good. <laughs> okay, Jennifer, you are on. This is our virtual um, past in the basket time this is our, our time to really fill into to what we value and so uh, thank you jennifer for bringing this to us you're welcome so if we could all just take a nice full breath into our hearts and feel the abundance of that life force that energy just flowing through us and uh i please join me in uh, as we come together to celebrate our abundance and know that our community is thriving and growing and expanding and prosperous. And so we say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, spirit. We know that spirit is our source, our supply, and our sufficiency individually and as a community. And it is our life. This is the absolute truth we know and affirm for all. We are so blessed to be in a world where technology helps us to stay connected. We are so very grateful for all of our ways of being with each other during these changing times. We are so grateful for all you have contributed and appreciate your ongoing support. 
which allows us to continue to come together in loving community. We accept our good and our greater good. And so it is. And I am so excited to share with you our new fundraiser, our first fundraiser for this year. And as you know, for obvious reasons. And so we were looking at what we could do that would be safe. And we have a fundraiser that we've actually done before that you can do right in your own home. And it's called Nature's Vision. And I'm sure some of you remember this uh, great fundraiser that offers so many different items. There's something for everybody. And it's a, it's a fundraiser for a greener world. And this fundraiser offers environmentally themed products and they also donate a, pro, a, a percentage of their proceeds for on certain items go back to environmental causes. And what's great is that we, Brentwood Inspired Living Center, get 40% back of the proceeds of all of your orders. So it's so easy. Uh, the instructions are on our website and they're also in the uh, weekly newsletter. So, and my email is there as well if you have any questions. Most important thing about doing this is putting in our code. Brentwood Inspired Living Center has a specific code. And so by putting in that code, we will get credit. If you don't put in the code, then we don't get the credit. But this is a great fundraiser because there's so much variety. And with gift giving coming around the corner for Christmas and there's birthdays and all kinds of holidays, you're bound to find something not only for yourself, but for others. And you can share this on your Facebook page and uh, emails. And so we'll let you know how to do that in our, uh, in our newsletter and in, on our website. So I wanted to just show with you, uh, share with you just a couple things. So I am wearing a t-shirt from Nature's Vision. And as you can see, it's one of their environmentally themed, um, it's called, uh, you can see it says, all you need is love, which is very cute. And then we have a solar, outdoor solar light that has uh, all these little acorns here light up. It's very cute. So anyway, there's all kinds of things. Check it out, have fun, and we appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I remember we had a fun time with that fundraiser last year. We did. So we did. That. Yeah. Yay! Okay, Asher has another beautiful, um, heartfelt song for our souls today. And um, hand it over. Thank you, Asher. Oh. I can't hear myself. Sorry. Blackbirds singing in the dead of the night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbirds singing in the dead of the night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see Oh, your life, you were only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird fly, blackbird fly into the light of the dark black night. Blackbird singing in the dead of the night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. 
all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive. Another perfect song for us today. Just love that song. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Asher, for bringing your heart and soul to us. We appreciate you. It's a pleasure. And Thank you for the invitation. And next time I'll figure out the Zoom thing so the sound is you know hopefully what? better. It was, but. it was perfect. Thank you yeah. so very, very much. I hope we'll have you in person too when we get rolling. We, we will get through all this. <laughs> we, will, we will all be in person at some point. I, I pray for that for sure. Yeah. I definitely thank see you. that. So thank you, Asher, so very much. And thank you, Jennifer, so very much, both of you, for joining us this morning. It is a pleasure to share time with such beautiful, beautiful beings. I, I love you both. So, um, yeah, thank you. You get to, you get to fly. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And I, it is my joy to welcome Michael Allen. Boy, we've clocked some hours on the phone recently, <laughs> and I am so grateful for our deep connection and that you are here to bring your spirit and your soul and your word. Um, so I have something exciting to share that Michael and I are um, developing a program together to bring to all of you when we come together again in person. Um, I'll just tell you that I think it was, dur it was during our... Uh, one of our three first three-hour conversations that we both came away with absolute confirmation of a yes to the creation of a, of a sacred space that we intend to bring to the community. We both feel very strongly that we can make a contribution to the transformation of this planet. And um, we know that we all, Michael and I know that we all have the capacity to change humanity for the better. So this will be a space for healing and transformation, a space to go beyond where we are and show up and contribute to what we want to see in the world. So we're excited and we'll keep you updated on that. Um, we're, we're infused with the spirit of God around this. Um, Michael, you're muted just so you know. I don't know why I can't unmute you. So, <laughs> so I love you. It is my delight to share his bio with you, and we spoke about this last time, and we spoke about it again this morning. That we are going to, um, we are going to add to this bio because it's a, it, it needs some additions. But for now, this is what we've got. Since 1996, Michael Allen has been teaching prisoners about emotional intelligence, the truth about thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs. For 10 years, he facilitated facilitated a national program for schools called Challenge Day that won an Emmy. It teaches about social oppression and cultural differences. For the past 10 years, he has coached teens on creating a successful life plan, including leadership skills and character development in a program that he created. And we are so blessed, so deeply blessed to have you, and I appreciate you um, so very, very much. So I invite everyone to um, pray in with us, and then I'm going to hand the screen over to Michael. And then when he finishes his message, we will um, I'll check out the phone and I'll look uh, for any questions or comments, and we'll um, we'll check in with those. And then we will move over to our Zoom link for the workshop at 11:30. So I'll, I'll see you there after. So let's just take a feel into the presence of this moment. We are here so deeply grateful to be together in community with one another. To create this container, the sacred space to come together to nourish one another. So we allowed ourselves to be. We center in the divine presence that we are. Let us bless one another as we recognize that we are that I am presence. Pure, unconditional essence, pure, unconditional love. We partner with the Holy Spirit and we move prayerfully, thoughtfully, open-heartedly into our time together right now. We bless and honor Michael today. And we release our word. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Namaste. I love you. Thank you for being with us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, life. <laughs> I want to... First off, just 
recognize that there's a, there's a powerful intelligence that's governing every moment of our life. It's moving through every cell of my being. It's in every thought that I think. It is a, an atmosphere of intelligence and an infinite love that's surrounding me and, and all beings and the universe itself. It's beyond anything I could ever describe to anyone, but I feel it. And because I feel it, I'm sitting here and my life is golden because I'm, I'm a unique expression of God and all beings are a unique expression of God. So I'm living in that gratitude. I'm living in that appreciation and grateful to be here with Brentwood. They have been uh, just great allies for love and for unconditional love. And it's an honor to be here. Love the music. Uh, thank you, Asher. That was awesome. Uh, definitely that second song really touched me in a deep way. I love it. Happy Father's Day. This is uh, my father, uh, Ardale, Michelangelo Allen. Uh, he was a big fish in life. And uh, I dedicate this talk, this share, this connection with you to this man. He was my father. My father passed in 1997. And uh, I had the great pleasure as a, an agape practitioner to facilitate my father's memorial service. And it was a small memorial building in, in Compton, California. And, um, it was sort of a real intimate room. And I walked in to start the service and the room filled up and people were standing everywhere. Uh, the door was wide open and uh, people were sitting down, lined up and it was huge. There was a, a number of people that I recognize and uh, I looked at these people and I noticed that a lot of them, I didn't know they knew my father, but I knew them. And I was really, really just uh, overwhelmed by the people who showed up to honor this man's life. And it, it really hit me in a deep way because I, I didn't think my dad was that big. I thought he was just a simple guy, you know, who provided, I had all my needs met, but I didn't think my dad was that big. He was just my dad, you know, I loved him. But I looked out and saw so many people that wanted to honor this man's life that I had to really close my mouth and turn the mic over to the people in the room and find out what did this man do to impact you? Because he's activated a, a powerful vibration of care inside of you that you showed up for his am amazing passing into the eternal life. So he touched your life. He cared enough to touch your life and you cared enough to respond to him. And that was such a blessing for me to see that my father was a huge fish to humanity. He touched a lot of guppies. He brought a lot of joy to people in a very simple way. What I called simple was magnificent. So I honor my father. I call him double A, Ardell Allen. Bless all fathers who reach down deep inside to be great providers. Bless all fathers who reach, reach inside to be the best lover they can be. Bless all fathers who are challenged and stumbling with understanding what it means to be father, how to meet the mental, emotional needs of their, their, their young ones, their children. I bless them. Knowing that there's a great father that governs the universe. There's a divine loving presence that's governing every breath that we breathe. I feel it, I live it, I allow it, I embrace it. I invite you to turn within and feel the indwelling presence of being alive just simply being alive. And let's start from that moment to raise our consciousness and raise our, our love for this thing called life or our challenges for this thing called life into a higher frequency, into a, a higher vibration of what we are potentially capable of, becoming a loving presence, becoming a beneficial presence, becoming such a great caring presence, caring presence, I love that Jennifer, caring presence that when we walk through doors, thresholds, and environments of people that are seeking care, they feel that care within us because it is a, a unique principle in our being to care. I believe I came to this planet because I cared so much. I believe I took this body and probably chose these circumstances of being a man and a man who is challenged by being different in the world. But I know that every choice that has a challenge, has a great magnificent overcoming 
that's possible if we turn to the focus of unconditional love. Unconditional love will challenge any being to be more and more of who they truly are. If we let go of circumstances, conditions, and judgments, and criticisms of anything external to the internal dwelling of who we are innately, we are missing a great experience in life. The power of love can change, transcend, and eliminate anything that is considered negative energy or discomfort, turn it into something amazing and awesome and powerful. All it takes is the divine intention from me and you to hold hands to hold hearts and to hold an idea in our consciousness that's greater than a judgment or a criticism about what the world is experiencing, about what the world is going through. The world is either a bad commercial or a great commercial in a lot of ways. Stop looking at the world. Look at that amazing heart within you that has a, a, an intelligence and a wisdom and a caring that wants to exude through your life. Turn to your heart. Know that your heart has wisdom you have probably never delved into to accept as who you are. Turn to your heart and care about your love of self and your love of humanity. We are one race. And to love self and to love that one race is absolutely infusing this universe with more of its own potential. We are magnifying what we are here to do is conscious, intelligent beings, and that's to magnify the absolutely beautiful evolution of life itself. We're not here to get stuck in small-minded humanity concerns that hurt people, judge people, separate people. We're here to be magnificent creators. We're here to be human beings with intelligence and love and passion and power and give that to each other and magnify this thing called life. Magnify an experience for children who have imaginations and creativity and want to even increase it themselves. I'm here on a mandate. I'm in this body on a mandate to absolutely understand and reveal what unconditional love wants to do through me so that any being in my presence, including myself, I feel the indwelling presence of the power of unconditional love and it accepts everything in the moment as good and amazing. So here's the challenge of care that I offer myself. Care so much about humanity that I will drop all judgment and criticism on my mind about human beings. Care so much about my life and what I'm giving to other men other children and other women on this planet, that everything happens effortlessly because I align myself with a caring presence, a God presence, a loving presence. I challenge myself to care so much about the vibration, about the frequency of the words I speak because although words don't teach, words have power. Words have this incredible energy that follow them. So may every word I speak be infused with an energy of absolute caring and unconditional love for all beings, all living things, everything within this thing called life that is created by an intelligence that has uniquely created you and me. We are unique expressions of a great intelligence. That's exciting. We are absolutely not our circumstances, not our conditions and not the challenges in the world. We are the potential of transformation. We are. We are the leading edge, as Abraham would say, but I'm on the front line. I always wanted to be on the front line, not with a weapon, but with an open heart and big arms to embrace the experience of being in this thing called life together. We are not alone in anything we, we face. We are not alone in anything we experience. We're all connected to an energy and intelligence that is offering and inviting us to care about our bodies in ways we never have to care about the energy we are expressing in the universe, to care about the energy we are creating within ourselves, to care about the infinite beauty of mother earth. There's so much beauty in your yard, my yard, your ocean, my ocean, your lakes, my rivers, your mountains, my mountains, this beautiful blue sky. There's so many ways 
to as one of my great friends would say, Jackson Gage, he would say, increase your life. Increase your life with the most powerful, loving things you could ever think of. Increase your life with only thinking of powerful, loving things. And another amazing friend of mine, David Fernandez Jr., he would say, earn your life. Earn your right to put your care so magnificently into your being that everywhere you go, you increase people earning the right to care about themselves, earning the right to care about other people, earning the right to care about their dreams and their passions and their children. I say, look in your community, in your neighborhood, look in your work environments, play environments and recognize the people who care, who care about something so simple as a kind gesture of saying hello, care about the people who wanna give you a spiritual hug, a physical hug, an absolutely emotional, I accept you hug, care about the people who do something so simple to cause a feeling of good that you pray for them, you bless them, care. Care about the tone of someone's voice. Do they need your hand? Do they need your encouragement, your inspiration, your absolute joy for being alive? Care. Care about bringing a vibration that is so joyous and so accepting and so inclusive that everyone feels their heart open. Care so much about what you put in your body that your body starts to have a party every time you put something loving into it. Whether you're feeding yourself physically or feeding yourself mentally or feeding yourself socially with people who magnify your presence and the uniqueness of who you are. Care about looking for what is a place your caring presence can provide to uplift, to inspire, to empower, to magnify love, to create a frequency on this planet that brings everything into alignment, to end the oppression of all beings, to eliminate the separation of humanity, the most intelligent species on the planet. We are the most intelligent species on the planet, I believe. And we all know the solution to harmony, order, balance, and you, unique connections in this world. And it's a simple decision, a simple decision and choice to be a loving presence, to be a caring presence, to practice unconditional love, to not love someone in order to receive, but to love someone in order to magnify, increase, and earn a possibility for everyone, everyone, to participate in a loving experience in life that feels like Disneyland every day. Care more about what a person is experiencing than what you think they should experience. Care more about uniquely embracing their experience as a unique way to magnify what is good on this, this planet. Care enough to listen to a child in such a way that when they are done speaking, they already feel more empowered and more inspired by your deep listening. Care more about what comes out of your mouth because you have the power to create with the words that you speak. They may not teach, but there's a divine energy, the law of the universe that follows the word spoken. So speak a word that lifts up, speak a word that transforms, speak a word that loves, embraces, hugs, inspires. Speak a word that is so powerful, it radiates an incredible vibration of well-being. Speak that word in your mind, speak that word in your heart. Know that energy is absolutely waiting to move in the direction of our intention. So where is your attention? What are you caring about? What are you caring for? What are you caring into because you are here to make a magnificent, a magnificent, epic, epic impact on the creation of life. So hold my hand, join me in being a caring presence defined only by an open heart of wisdom and absolutely on a mission, a physical mission to be expressed through this intentional body temple. And know that everything you do in the name of love is magnified. Everything you do in the name of caring is your purpose to magnify this thing called life. 
May every thought that we think and every decision we make lead to the evolution of humanity in the most powerful, loving, and beautiful ways. I know that it's not easy to be unconditionally loving. It takes work. I know it takes work, but it's the work that is fulfilling. It's the work that feeds you and I. It's the work that enhances our relationships, that absolutely builds a, a greater awareness of the oneness of life. It's a, it's a work that magnifies good, not just in my frequency, but in the frequency of all good that is seeking to be magnified and good. We're amazing energy beings. We're amazing loving beings. And I have a wish. And I know the genie of life will grant this wish. My wish is that all men on this planet become more loving. My wish is that all men on this planet become more calm and relaxed with being a loving presence. And it's my wish that all men shake hands, hug, and not only see each other as brothers, but see each other as creators of love. Not just brothers, but creators of love. We're not just getting through it. We're here to create something in life. We're not just getting through the hard times. We're here to transform the hard times into something so magnificent that we don't wanna leave these bodies. We wanna stay on this planet and keep producing love in such a way that there is no war. There's only peace. All needs are met. Everyone's fed, heart, mind, and soul. I love humanity. And I love that we have the intelligence within us to transform anything that we call negative into something beyond positive something that's knowing filled with a love and a power that absolutely magnifies itself as who we are. We're amazing. So I invite you to be amazing, to be pulled by a vision of love. I invite you to increase your life. I invite you to earn it by working at it. Work at being loving. Don't just assume it's gonna happen. Put your work in, in here, in your heart. I'm so, so grateful for every, every ear that has heard what I've been sharing. I'm so grateful that you've taken the time just to listen to this cat, you know, see what he wants to contribute. And uh, I'm grateful that you tuned in for a moment just to spend time with Brentwood, just to hear what spirit wants to, you know, nudge me on and get me to move into. I am here on a mandate to be a loving presence on this planet. Amen. Amen, brother. I'm here on a mandate to be a loving presence on this planet. Man, you know what happens when you talk? I can't write fast enough. <laughs> I can't keep up with all the good stuff. Let me let me just let me say a few golden nuggets here. Care more about what a person is experiencing rather than what you think they should be experiencing. That's profound. That's, that's big. That's really big. We are one race. Let's not get stuck in the small-minded. Everything you do in the name of love and caring is magnified. That excites me. Thank you. Let's check in with everybody here. How about some questions and comments for Michael? Very touching and encouraging. Thank you, Maria says. Be pulled by a vision of love. Yes, I loved that one too. Thank you, Laura. Laura was writing some down too. Recognize the people who care. Yes. Jennifer Wilson says, I want to care more about the food I put in my body. Thank you for that reminder. Yes. And Michael walks his talk. Let me just tell you because we were talking yesterday and what he was doing was juicing. He was getting all his good celery and citrus juice and so he is not just talking here he's walking the talk and that is why i love you so very much kathy says i'm grateful you have grateful to have you here for us here for us to hear the love you express michael <laughs> yes he expresses so much love kathy doesn't he sorry i got tongue-tied on that one Jennifer says, beautiful, thank you, Michael. I resonated with care about the tone of someone's voice. Yes, Jan, care about the tone of someone's voice. 
Steven says, I finally got to comments to turn on. Yay, good morning. Yes, this morning's talk was amazing, inspiring, Ginny says. Yes, yes, yes. Um, any questions, you guys? I, too, am looking at one race and loving everyone. Yes, yes, on the front line with open heart and big arms. I loved that, too. That was one of them I wrote down. Like I said, I can't write fast enough. <laughs> Love seeing your father and mother, Michael. Yes. Thank you for reminding us to care more about all, Christy says. Karen says, you are wonderful. Thank you so much, Michael. Jennifer says, thank you, Michael, for your profound caring. I am looking forward to hearing more about the work. Yes, yes. Be pulled by a vision of love and work at it. Work at it. Focus on it. I loved that. Yes, humans can do better. Thanks, Bob. Agreed. Ron says, we need each other's hearts to work at it, to deepen. How do we develop the capacity to deepen? So here's a question for you, Michael. That was your uh, something you said. We need each other's hearts to work at it, to deepen. How do? And the question is, how do we develop the capacity to deepen? Any any capacity that we want to increase, the first thing we can do is turn inside. If everything is inside of us, why are we going down the street? Close your eyes. Turn within and just have the intention of wanting to go deeper. And I'm telling you, when you make a decision to want to go deeper into who you truly are and you let go and allow that, that intention to, to take over you, you will go as deep as you need to go whenever you want to, but you gotta go inside. Don't go looking for advice. Don't go asking somebody how to do it. Just have the courage to close your eyes, turn within and say, spirit, I'm here. Take me. Trust your soul like you like you trust the sky is not going to fall on you. And let your soul guide you. You'll go deep. Guarantee it. Amen. Amen. For sure. I concur. Thank you. Betty says, thank you, Michael. Beautiful. That is my desire, too. We are light and love in the world. Yes, we are, Betty. <clears throat> Luinda says, it's so easy to be angry these days. Thanks for the reminder to focus on the love in all of us. Jan says, I love earn your life with powerful, loving intention. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yay. Question from Laura Bush. How did your father influence your view of life? Laura Bush, oh my God, that lady reaches down for the uh, the truth within you. My father has influenced my life. He did these really simple things to inspire people. You know, he said things like, hey, come to work every day. Hey, make sure you're on time. Hey, no reason to get upset about that. That's not yours. He made these simple statements to people a lot in the world. He didn't necessarily make them to me, but there was a quiet presence about my father that I couldn't put words to. And I, I have that inside of me. Where are He has the power to be calm in chaos. I watched this man lift a 2,000 pound car off of a guy with one hand, you know, when I was a kid. Um, so I knew he was Superman. But when he left his body, I knew that, that there was something greater. He, he left the planet when I left his uh, memorial. And it had to do with being a loving presence. It had to do with being the best kind person you could be in the world. And I can't think of anything less than being loving and present. Uh, and I'm sure that comes from my dad. I'm sure that comes from him. And he infused the love of jazz inside me that like turns me into a joy monger every time I listen to it. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Laura Bush. Yeah. Thank you, Laura and Michael. Beautiful to hear you speak of your dad. I know it's a really heart, heartfelt Father's Day today. Uh, Pat says, play instead of work. 
Oh, about uh, be pulled by a vision of love <clears throat> and work at it. Yeah, we can play at it. That works, right? <laughs> it's called work play. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called work play. That's what we call work play in, 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 uh, in agape. Yeah, because when you, it's not work, right? We're, we're, when we're in that service, when we're like, hey, hey, God, here I am, like, take me. I'm here to serve. That's joy. That is right. play, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. So when you yeah. tap into that, there's, it's not work. Yeah, I get it. I'd, I'd much rather work at play than work at trying to solve a problem. Amen. Sheila says, thank you for the reminder that we actually have to put effort into loving others. Thank you, Sheila. Jenny says, wow. Laura says, love that. Yay, you guys. Anything else? We are so grateful to be here in your presence with you, feeling into your your essence. You know, it's funny at first when we, we started this whole Zoom, Facebook Live thing, um, it felt very awkward to me. <laughs> It was actually something I was really terrified of. It's it's a funny thing because I can get up in front of big groups of people and speak, but getting in front of a camera and going Facebook Live is just like, ah. and um, at first, you know, it was a little awkward, but now it's like, I really feel into everybody tuning in. So some something happened. And so I love this. I love, I love all of you being with us because you are with us. You are here with us. And so thank you. Thank you for your presence and your essence. We appreciate it. Jenny says, love the work you do. Yes. Okay, you guys. Well, I think we're going we're gonna to wrap it up here, and we're going to see you at the workshop um, on the Zoom link at 1130. So I posted that in our Brentwood Inspired Living Connection Group, and when we finish here, I'm also going to post it on our, our main page right under uh, this video, or right, it'll be right above this video. So, um, so tune in there with us at 1130. It's going to be spectacular spectacular and I just want to remind you that our weekly groups are still meeting during the week on zoom so tune into those everything's on our website brentwoodilc.org if you have prayer request requests send those in because we get those to our prayer team and we are just covering those in uh, affirmative prayer <clears throat> and uh, that's really powerful if you find our community nourishing to your spirit and your soul and your mind and your heart uh, check out our giving page on our on our website so we are so grateful and so thankful for you all today. And let me just check one more time. I like to just check in one last time because sometimes questions come in. Thank you, Michael. Jenny says, Laura says, grateful for this time to stop and be in the presence of unconditional love and peace. Thank you for your message this morning, including the music and prayers. Thank you for being here, Laura. I felt your presence. Thank you so much. Uh, Pat says, thank you to Amy for your work. <laughs> thank you, Pat, for yours. And Patty's here watching. Good morning, you guys. I love you so much. So we are going to be coming back in person on July 19th. And um, if I could turn my screen around, I'd show you. But here in the, the uh, sanctuary, we've got all the chairs separated. We've, we're doing our part here. So, so we'll keep you posted about that. That's coming up. Um, topic for workshop. Okay, Michael, do you want to say a little something about the workshop? Thank you, Jan. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you know, the workshop is about encouraging everyone to move into inner work. There's, there is the opportunity to go out and, and be in groups and learn more about how humanity can, can come together and, and, and evolve in, in greater ways with all of the uh, challenges that we're facing. But today, the workshop is about creating your sacredness and creating a foundation for your inner work and recognizing that it's not hard work. It's, it's, it's the work that you are here to do because it's, it's what's needed for the transformation of humanity. Not that anything's wrong with you. It's not about digging up your dark drama. It's about creating. That's what, that's what the work is about. You know, I, I, I'm about creating. We can, we can stay in the psychology of it or we can create. Mm -hmm. Once you understand the psychology of it, it's time to create. Because you're going to tell the same psychology story about it. So let's create. Let's, let's create. I'm in, I'm in. From okay. what we know, let's create. 
Thank you, Michael. Yeah, You're join welcome. us. Join us yes. there. The Zoom link, yes. 1130. Yes. We'll be there. Okay, everybody, I'm going to uh, share a prayer of transformation as we, we move out of this space. Ah, take a deep inhale. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God directs us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and always shall be. And we are divine. I love you all. I miss you all. Check out Zoom. We'll be there in just a few minutes. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, Michael. I love you. Bye-bye. I love you too.